This is Ethan, and I'm here with Dave, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 223-inch. On this episode, we interview Weird the Al Yankovic story costume designer Wendy Benbrook. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch you don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Well, hey, Dave, welcome to episode 223 inch. Thank you, Ethan. Welcome to you, too. I trust that you had a productive and prosperous American Leap Day. Uh, American Leap Day? Do you mean American Leap Year Day? Yeah, sure, whatever. Well, did you do anything noteworthy? Uh, nothing leaps to mind. On that note, I think it's time we leap right into what's happening in Weird Al related news. Over the weekend, the Cinema Audio Society announced the winners of each of their seven award categories for the 60th annual CAS Awards. We are pleased to share that Weird the Al Yankovic story took the win for the category of non theatrical motion pictures or limited series. The honorees include production mixer Richard Bullock, re-recording mixer Tony Solis, scoring mixer Phil McGowan, ADR mixer Brian Magrum, and Foley mixer Erica Kosky. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2008 Weird Al Podcast, congratulations to Weird the Al Yankovic Story and the audio mixing team on their big, huge, gigantic win. The long-awaited Weird Al tribute album, Rudy Reboot's Weird, a ska punk tribute to Al Yankovic, is now available. The digital album contains 10 tracks covering some of Weird Al's most popular original songs in a ska slash punk style. You can pick up the digital album right now over at rudyreboots.bandcamp.com for just $3. Make sure your evening is free whenever you do pick up this album so you can unencumberedly skank the night away. It's been revealed that Liam Neeson is starring in a remake of Naked Gun, directed by Akiva Schaefer. Akiva is not only a member of The Lonely Island, he appeared in Weird the Al Yankovic Story playing the snake-adorned Alice Cooper. We can only hope and pray that Akiva holds up the long-standing tradition of having Weird Al make a cameo in the Naked Gun films. Alert! Today, Wednesday, March 6th, we Love Video, a nonprofit video rental library in Austin, Texas, is hosting a screening of Weird Al's first movie, UHF. The free screening starts right at 7 p.m. Twine Ball time, and their fundraising is part of Amplify Austin Day. If you're in Austin, be sure to check out this fun event. Dave, I don't know if I told you, but this past weekend, my pals, the comedians Devin Siebold, Casey Mack, and Liz Blank were in Albany to perform at the Palace Theater, so I met them for lunch at none other than Wizard Burger! This episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant, Burrito Burrito, home of the two-pound double wrapped in quesadilla Burrito Burrito, and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, and Wizard Burger for mouth-watering loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger, feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com and wizardburger.com to order ahead. Okay, I think it's time we leap right into what's happening in Dave and Ethan's 2008 Weird Al podcast related news. Last week, Dave and I recorded a special crossover episode with some other Weird Al podcast hosts. We joined Lauren from the Beard Al podcast and Matt and Matt from the Weird Algorithm podcast as guests on the Weird Pals podcast hosted by Tim and Andy. We talked all about Weird Al's song, I Think I'm a Clone Now, and the episode is set to drop on April 29th. Okay, I think it's time we leap right into this episode's interview. Take it away, Ethan. Dave and I are very excited to welcome to the podcast. She's a two-time Emmy Award-winning costume designer, and she just happened to be the costume designer for Weird the Al Yankovic Story. We are so excited to welcome Wendy Benbrook. How's it going, Wendy? Hello. I'm super excited. Thanks, you guys. That's so nice. <laughs> I mean, it makes me feel special. You know, all this stuff is happening. 
I've got no, I've got no awards on this show. How dare them? I'm just kidding. It's funny. I, I, I think don't care. Weird. The Al Yankovic story should have won in every category, even in award shows where it wasn't eligible. That's my opinion. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of Eric and Al and everyone and all the actors. Everyone was so enthusiastic. And we did it so fast. Incredible. Before we get into some Weird Al stuff, I just want to mention, just to uh-huh. to wet the palates of our listeners, you're about to go out on the road with Rod Stewart. You've been with Kiss for over 20 years as their costume designer. Uh, I mentioned your, your Emmy Awards, which came from working on Mad TV. We're going to get to all that. But first, we really would love to hear about how you got into this industry, this incredible industry as a costume designer. Um... Yeah, it's it's weird. I'm I'm sitting in my hometown right now, and there it was when I lived here. It was 110 people, and now it's about 90, and it's it's so incredible. Like you're just out in the middle of nowhere, and you, what do you do? You fish, you hike, you swim, you lay out in your backyard in the dirt on a chair, and. You just think about, like, all I could think about was, oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> and I got to do something else. And my mom was the, um, she was a postmaster for a post office that is built inside of this house and has been here since oh, wow. 1918. Wow. So when I came here, I just turned nine. It was my ninth birthday, actually, the day we moved in. And, um, I don't know, like I was, I didn't, I mean, I I would thank it on boredom because I would sit and my mom would sew and while she was waiting for customers to come into the small post office and she would sew and then she would teach me how to sew and then I went to a high school where all, you know, there, there was like your choices of um, things to do that were fun was home ec, mm-hmm. art, or, or like, um, working on car, you know, auto shop or something like that. There was like four or five things you could do. And all I could think of again was like, oh, I got to get out of (laughs) here. And so, and so I moved. um, I I, I don't know, like, it's sort of a very long convoluted story. But um, I, after I turned, I think I just turned 30 when I actually was, I had done so many things. I worked for Vision Streetwear, um, Sims. Um, I was a secretary for Hughes Aircraft. I did so many weird things. And then somebody met me and just started sort of, I guess sort of grooming me, the owner of Vision Streetwear. Sort of just like putting me into something different than what I was used to. And from there, I moved to San Francisco And then ended up going to the Fashion Institute. And I was there for like, I don't know, two and a half years or something. And was waitressing and earning my own way and just trying to figure out life. Moved to L.A., um, accidentally met a producer before then. And then he he just hired me in wardrobe because I went to fit him. But what I really wanted to do was get into the art department. But now I love wardrobe. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you, you kind of accidentally <laughs> oh. fell into it. I, I accidentally fell into it. I really did. But when I went to FITM, it, um, I remember everyone was talking about, uh, I went for a visual presentation, and everybody, so that was more art defined, and everybody was saying, and I was like the oldest student there, because <laughs> I was 30. I just turned 30 when I first started. And everybody... Um, Everyone kind of was wanting to put me in in um, fashion. And I was like, I'm not really good at that. Like, I'm probably better at making things. Hmm. Uh, but somehow, somehow this guy was just convinced, and he put me on a post-apocalyptic film. It was very low budget. His name was Zane Levitt. And I still, to this day, tell him, like, I owe everything to him for just believing in me and starting me off. And I was making, I think... Three hundred dollars in the end. In the beginning, I was making two fifty for prep, and that was six days a week. And then for shooting six days a week, I was making three hundred dollars, and that was like 
33 years ago. $300 a week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know it's crazy. But, I, but, you know, I just, starting from there, I had people who liked me, some maybe who didn't, and I was kind of drug along, and I really worked really hard to get somewhere. And it, it was pretty much propelled by myself and help, help people who loved me. But it wasn't like... You know. What was your first big break? Was that when you uh, connected with Mad TV? Mad yeah. TV. The break was like right after that post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic film. Somebody introduced me to a um, a company that did promos, and so they did a lot of like wraparounds for Fox. And so they introduced me to this girl, and this girl and I hit it off really well. And she's producer for this company. And she would hire me for stuff. So this is actually very connected to everything. Now what I'm going to tell you. So she would hire me. She, when I was in San Francisco, I worked for a Kiss cover band. Uh, not worked for. <laughs> my boyfriend was a drummer for a Kiss cover band. I worked oh, wow. for them, but it was free. <laughs> and so it was this really fun band. It was called Detroit Rock City. And they also did a Bowie cover band called Panic in Detroit. So oh, wow. one time Panic in Detroit opened for Detroit Rock City. It was funny. It was called Panic in oh, Detroit geez. Rock City. It. it was really fun. You guys can get that because you're, you're kitschy like that. But yeah, and, and I loved Kiss. I grew up with Kiss uh, out in this little tiny town. I loved them. All my friends loved them. and it, But I didn't really know anything about them. I just knew their music and stuff. So um, cut to, I get hired by this company. She knows I love Kiss. She gets me on these Fox promos and Matt TV. The first thing I did was with Matt TV. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I kept telling my friend, Christina, I'm going to get Matt TV. Uh, we're going to get that job. We're going to be on that job. <laughs> and then the costume designer um, left the show, I think, after season two. And somebody called me because of these promos. But I wasn't union. And he was like, and I knew that I couldn't get that job because I wasn't union. But when they called me in to interview, I went anyway. <laughs> and then after I had this great interview and he calls me and he's like, we're really interested in you, your union, right? And I'm like, no. And I oh. really didn't <laughs> no. know that much. I had never worked on a legit TV show mm-hmm. ever. Like it was all promos or something. So they... um they were like, okay, all right, so what we, so we're going to call the union and see what happens. And then they said, we have to hire, we have to interview all these non working costume designers that are union. And then if that doesn't work out, then we can talk to you again and see what we can do. So ultimately, they ended up wanting me and they hired me. They got me in the union. Wow. I mean, I had to do a ton of work to yeah. get in the union, but they, right, but they yeah. did the paperwork. So I could actually be considered, but I had, but I was working on Mad, and it was insane. I mean, we would do 50 to 120, 150 costumes a week. It was no joke. Yeah, wow. I I can't even imagine because there are so many different you know people in each scene, but then so many sketches per episode. I always yeah. love oh Mad TV. I mean, it is it was such a great show. Me too. So all of this is so good because it's all so connected. So then um, while I was doing these wraparounds and with Mad TV, before I worked for Mad TV, um, the, oh no, actually I was working for Mad TV. And then the, the producer who would hire me for all these like Fox wraparounds and stuff, I ultimately got my job with Mad TV through that. And then... She calls me one day and she had me on on some gig and she said, I'm going to take you off the gig because Kiss is coming back in costume and I know how much you love Kiss. So (laughs) you're going to, she was like, so I'm going to take you off this this job and I'm going to put you, it's Hard Rock in Vegas, I'm going to put you on this gig, but you've got to get yourself covered for the other gig. And I was like, oh, oh, my God, you're kidding me. Like, that was like a dream come true. I mean, I already had Mad TV. It was a dream come true. Now this. And because I wasn't, I didn't expect anything beyond that. 
So for for all the time I worked on Mad TV, I, I ultimately I went to do this gig with Kiss, um, met their tour manager who ultimately became their guitar player, Tommy. Hmm. And Tommy and I oh, kind of wow. hit it off. I had a boyfriend, but we had a crush on each other, like a one day crush. Mm-hmm. And then we became friends. And um, we went out a couple of times here and there when neither of us were dating somebody. And we just had a very casual, good friendship relationship. And um, then Kiss needed somebody and their designer was leaving. And um, they were looking for someone to help and Tommy recommended me and he's like I don't know if this is like gonna if this is like <laughs> gonna be a great thing for you or not I don't know like because gee you know they're all tough they're tough guys yeah. they're icons and they can have whatever they want they can have any costume designer they want they can have anyone and I was uh, you know it's very scary when it's that kind of situation and the same as Weird Al he can have anyone like these guys are all icons, and I'm stoked. I don't know how I got so lucky. <laughs> but but because I got into that, then years later, you know, I had known uh, Tommy, and then suddenly, I don't know, they needed someone, and Gene approved me. And then right then, Ace left the band, and Tommy came in. And so it was really funny to, to uh, work with him on that level. And to yeah. work with all of them. But then now, cut to, I work with uh, on another sketch comedy with Nick Swarston. And I meet Eric, because Eric t- directed an uh, episode or two of that. Okay. And um, I, he was familiar to me when I Zoom interviewed with him. But I really didn't, you know, he, he was, he is such a baby face. Like, he was such a, must have been such a baby then. And, and it all kind of, like came together because of my sketch comedy and and my rock experience does that make sense totally yeah Work, working on al That's, so being yeah. in sketch comedy and then and yeah and they didn't even like they've i don't know it's it, cool it almost makes Such so a- much sense is there anyone else like you out there who has that kind of pedigree of both <laughs> you know comedy and costumes and emulating celebrities but also rock and roll royalty i mean i don't know if there's anyone else oh thank you and that was before i was working with rod stewart but i'm not de- i don't design his costumes <laughs> i take care of him and the band he rock rod stewart is all on his own he's he is amazing that's amazing yeah before we stray too far off of the topic of Kiss, I, I've got to ask a couple of questions because, I mean, you yes. you said it, and I think you might have even undersold it, and you said Kiss is, is an iconic band. They are one of the most iconic bands. They are one of the best-known bands. They're Hall of Famers. They, they're incredible. Yeah. And uh, they're also extremely well-known. They're, they're the first, if not the first, certainly the most uh, well-known costume band out there. So th- the fact that, that you get to work on their costumes is, is incredible. What sort of input did they have? What sort of input did you have to put together their costumes? And how did you come up with the costumes for Kiss? Okay, I'm super excited that you asked me that because people don't ask you that. They don't really understand that, you know, these guys know who they are. They've been around so long, right? And they have their, they all have their personas. So that the, so it's funny, like, I, 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 my job is costume designer, and that's what I do with Kiss. However, um, they have so much input and so many ideas. So they generally come to the table with an idea, mm-hmm. each of them. And I work with each one of them. Paul is the one who has amazing perspective on everybody else's costumes. He's like, he's a total fashionista. He knows, he knows costumes. He knows how things look on people. He's really, you know, he doesn't just, he doesn't just take a blink and say, oh yeah, that's great. And I'm, and I'm detailed. So I'm very, um, I get very weird about certain things. And I, I know when it's going to be something that, um, 
I wish you could see my face because I'm using my hands a lot. I know when it's <laughs> gonna be gonna be yeah. something where where um like Gene. I think most people know Gene. He's he's brilliant. He he knows what he likes, and he's so smart, and he's so funny, and he's so fun. Yeah. And he's just, but it, but he has a a threshold for when we're looking at costumes like when we're when we're trying to do a fitting he has a threshold so he kind of uh, is like okay are we done right in the middle of it (laughs) okay we're done now and i'm like no 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 wait please can i just get this wing length can i just gene could just do me one favor like can you just pick up your bass guitar and but you know i'm not going to pretend that i'm brilliant but for some reason for 21 years they have been able to tolerate me <laughs> and me them. You know, it's like it's a rare connection. Oh, they get they they can. <laughs> oh yeah. So the fact that the connection works, they know that I work really hard. They know that I d- d- um, try everything. I try really hard, and I try to make things work. And um, I don't I don't bend easily. But I know when I'm when the jiggy's up. I know when I have to say, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's. But I don't really do that. Like I'm more like, okay, you're. Of course, you know what you like, but I know you know. But what about this? What about this idea? Can we kind of like, and it, it's definitely every four, every one of those four people are super. They're super smart. All four of them. They all four have so many things to give and costume ideas. And, you know, I facilitate what they're looking for and I bring a little bit extra, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's not, yeah. I mean, there's many times where it's like um, Paul will say, no, or, or Eric being the drummer all the way in the back, like, Wendy, you gotta, you gotta, like, I need more shine in this, you know, or whatever. Like, we need more rhinestones. How do we figure this out? You know, so because he's in the back. You know, and and then there will be times where I go out in the front at, you know, their first show in a new costume and I look and say, OK, um, Tommy, I, we need more rhinestones on your on your arms because it's just it's, it's just not it's not wowing. It's not doing anything like when I'm looking at you on camera or you know what I mean? Or uh, with Paul, sometimes like we'll work through it we'll try to work through a pattern and we just can't get there like i can't i can't get there like i'm showing him a pattern and of stones or something on something and he'll say no 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 and then i say hey why don't i come over to your house and i'm going to bring the fabric and i'm going to bring a bunch of rhinestones and let's work together and like like do the layout because really sometimes you these last costumes that they have, I'm not kidding when I say start to finish, design concept to finish, I think I had two months. Wow. Start to oh, finish. Wow. And wow. if you think about every time, you look at their costumes and think about every yeah. tiny little piece of those costumes that's finding the stuff, finding the fabrics, getting them approved. Getting sketches, because I don't sketch. I'm horrible at drawing. That's where I fall short. That's where I fall very short. I would make more money probably if I knew how to sketch. (laughs) If you look at my sketches, you'd be so sad. I would think a a further challenge for designing for them is it has to work on the road and live up to, you know, the the stress and... And, you know, everything that goes on on the road of t- putting it on and for fast changes and that kind of stuff, it has to look good um, and it has to be usable. Whereas I would assume like on Mad TV or or even Weird the Al Yankovic story, it's like, you know, this costume has to look good for today or for two weeks. <laughs> today. Today and that's it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, definitely. Yeah. Definitely the wear and tear on the Kiss costumes. There's one girl who, whoever that may be, I, it's been me sometimes, it's been... Um, Rebecca, it's been Renee, it's been Julie, like there are, uh, it's been Hannah. There's a group of girls who have sort of rotated on the road. And if I'm on a show, I can't go on the road. But really, they kind of don't really ask me unless I'm sort of like, they're like, oh, no one else can do it. How about Wendy? You know, and it always sort of turns out 
good, you know, in the end. Yeah. And um, you have yeah. to, there's, there's all day maintenance. There's eight to 10 hours, probably 10 hours, 12 hours actually on the road a day. Sometimes it's just working on jeans costume. Um, you know, you have to go yeah. through and replace <laughs> all the rhinestones, make sure prongs aren't going to sticking out and are going <laughs> to like cut their fingers. You have to like <laughs> sparkle up Tommy's vest. You have to, you know, there's pa- spray painting, there's gluing, there's every day. All There isn't, yeah. you're like checking the shoes and then you take the shoes to some rando in some, you know, state and you have to f- find a shoe store if there's repair that needs to be done, needs to be done today. And you walk in with these boots and they're like, Whoa, <laughs> what are these? Or they go, this looks like kiss. And you're like, yes, it is. And they need you to not take pictures. And I need you to not, not bring people, you know, they're going to take pictures. Oh my God. And then oh, you yeah. have people post, then you have people posting Call online. Like, know, of course. Uh, like just some, some girl who was helping as a PA, like, yeah, I do. I design kisses costumes. You won't, you won't see me out there that much as far as my name at, with them. But I've been with them 21 years, and it's incredible. no one can take that title for 21 incredible. years. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but people do. And then there would be somebody who might say, oh, this girl, like, she she makes jeans, copies, she's the Kisses costume designer. And I'm like, if, like, I would say, like, those guys essentially come up with so much concept, and we do it together. We're very collaborative. And I ultimately get everything made. I find all the people. I find all the fabrics. I find everything. But it's going through the sketch process with the band that is, you know, and then trying on stuff and seeing how it's working. And sometimes it just doesn't work. It was a very hard one with Paul on the last, um, on the end of the road. He wasn't hard. It was hard to, uh, for him and I to get exactly where we wanted to be but he was great he was great fun how did working on kiss prepare you for the ultimate honor working on weird the al yankovic story (laughs) oh my god (laughs) i don't even know al was so easy (laughs) he was so easy there was the there there literally was only one time and it wasn't even an issue well first i have to tell you this so i met Al on a Zoom, and it was after um, after I was hired. And there was a Zoom meeting. It was Eric and Al and Daniel and a few other people, and that freaked me out. I was like, Daniel Radcliffe? I'm like, there were so many people. I was like, where am I right now? But it was kind of like, it's so funny, cause my, because my friend is a costume designer, and she was for Drunk History forever. And... Uh, we moved out here from San Francisco together and we both like ended up winning Emmys and it's, and she's so great at sketch too, but she's a lot more of a perfectionist than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they, the kiss thing, some kind of insane perfectionist and some of them, but she really is. But she worked with almost everyone that was on weird. She, because all those people were on drunk history. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. That was a big crossover. Including videos. weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's all these funny crossovers. And um, I had worked with Jack Black on Mad TV. Hmm. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, Jack, I worked with you on Mad TV like 100 years ago. And then he was like, oh, my God, that was such a fun show. That was so much fun. <laughs> and we and then it just immediately like made everything comfortable because, you know, all these people had like drive by fittings with them. I had like, oh, you're in here for 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, sorry, Conan O'Brien. Here you go. Hope this <laughs> hope this turtleneck fits you. Like, <laughs> but Al, Al was amazing. And the first thing that I said to Al is he, I don't, well, you guys know him so well, so you probably have seen his performance of What Is Life, the song. Yes. George, it's a George yep. Harrison song. And oh, right, yes. I yes. was, uh, so I'm in love with that song. I play it all the time, but then I didn't know that Al did it, and then I um, watched, I I was looking up Weird Al videos, and, you know, 
preparing myself. Not that I didn't grow up with him because I did, but I was preparing myself for just really paying attention to it um, wardrobe wise. And when I was looking up Weird Al songs, What Is Life came up and he smashes it. Yeah. Like he does it so amazing. And then when I see George Harrison's video of it, I'm so depressed. Like Al did the best job performance wise, as far as I'm concerned, of What Is Life. And so I had to tell Al, like, I saw your performance. <laughs> like, I didn't think it would mean anything to him. But I was just like, it's one of my favorite songs. And I loved it. And it, and he, it made him so happy. He was like, I'm so happy that song, like, <laughs> you know, made it. And that was my very first contact with Al himself. And then I got to go to his house oh, and look man. at all the Hawaiian oh. shirts. Oh, man. So How we all, cool. We all, oh my gosh, we all call them Hawaiian shirts, but a lot of them were also character shirts. Like, um, yeah, they're prints, but people want to call them Hawaiian. But a lot of them were not Hawaiian print shirts. Um, He does much more than just Hawaiian. He did a lot of, like, 80s, like, just like um, crazy 80s prints. Right, I right. don't know what to call it right now. I'm so sorry. Like shapes. Kind of like a Hawaiian style, though. It's kind of, yeah, I guess Hawaiian yeah, shirt is kind but, of but the, those sh- yeah, the but overall those term. Are but kind of, I, yeah, I know what you mean. Yes. Well, I think, yeah, but when you're, you know, when you're a costume designer, they're like camp shirts or <laughs> blah, blah, blah. They have like different different terms, button ups, button downs, yeah. uh, camp, uh, shirt sleeve printed shirt like we all use different things but we would say like it's an 80s print it's a blah 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 but he definitely had a style but go backwards and look at that and you'll see hawaiian is hawaiian right it there they are yeah but it's like that's his that's his thing so i was in my head i was like hawaiian and i also another weird connection is that I had a website forever. Like every year I have, when I, whenever I do my birthdays and I do it for myself, it's always Hawaiian themed. Oh, cool. Oh, and nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so I'm totally into Hawaiian clothes and I, and, and just like whatever things from Fiji or Hawaii or, you know, Polynesian and even some of it, just other Asian countries. Uh, but I would—I had a website where I, that's all I sold on oh, it, wow. and so I still have this huge. Yeah, I have this huge <laughs> um, collection of that stuff because I love that stuff. So some of those shirts for him were from my stock for Daniel. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm I'm really curious to hear about how you did select those shirts that Daniel wears in the film because. On one hand, you see them, and it's like, okay, this is obviously a Weird Al shirt. But on the other hand, it's not anything... They're not necessarily exact replicas of things that Weird Al has worn. Nothing. Nothing is. Nothing is. Um, We went to the house so that we could get an idea of the vans that he wore. Of the So in his closet is, like, he's got a closet full of his Hawaiian, quote-unquote, shirts. <laughs> and... He's got a collection of his slip-on vans, and some of them are tie-ups. They're all very skatery and super cool, and I was, like, drooling over them. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, um, yeah, he just, he let us come over and look at them. Um, There was, I think, it was two of us or three of us, and we took, he let us take some pictures, and then I went to this place in downtown L.A., that has like, it's like a rag shop. You can go in and you can just dig, like dumpster dive. If you look <laughs> at my Instagram, there's one picture you'll see of me with literally surrounded by like piles of Hawaiian shirts around my body. And it was such a funny thing. I made my assistant take a picture. I was like diving in face first and just pulling them out. And what was really sad about that is I didn't get as many shirts from there as I would have liked to that fit Daniel. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we did rental houses. I did thrift stores. I did those, um, rag houses and, because that was my, my first like important 
things to get that. Because pants, you can get, like, contemporary that, you know, that kind of have that vibe. Yeah. Like, 501 kind of looks. Yeah. So that's easier. But getting the shirts and then looking at, like, what he wears under them. So black, you know, a lot of times he wore a black T-shirt or he wore clothes. Um, it's like black T-shirts and clothes without a T-shirt. Like, your clothes with a black T-shirt or a black... You know what I mean? It was kind of like a... You, it, it it was a it was a little tricky because you actually what's in your head for like someone like kiss somebody like um, Al if you were just not doing intensive intensive research you're really gonna screw yourself if you're doing a movie like that yeah because you're because it's what's in your head is different than what it actually really is and where is the hemline you know and what's a uh, Daniel Radcliffe versus Al is taller so Al could get a long he could get away with a longer shirt but when you're doing Daniel if you're trying to make it feel more like Al your the ratios are a little bit different does that make sense hey, absolutely yeah yeah and you touched on it a little bit there but I was going to ask you what goes into costuming actors who are playing real life people that peop that many people are familiar with their look. I mean they all have iconic styles and looks, so what goes into costuming them? It really is so so like Madonna, for example. I asked, do I have to imitate Madonna? Or do I have to do give a Madonna vibe? Like here's what her vibe was during this time. So what I was doing with every single character, I had I probably had hundreds of boards where I would I would go in, I would I go, do we want Madonna's this this um, time of look or we do do we want this year? Or sometimes um, it was more of what do, what do people see as this in this period, even if it's not this period? Or right. we're at a so we were at the pool party and I'm like, yeah, it's great. Like um, David Bowie, like, you know, that was the only conflict that Al and I had. And it wasn't a conflict at all, to be honest. It wasn't. But he was disappointed in what I was going to bring to the table. But I had had it approved by Eric already. And he didn't feel like it was going to be, like, it was going to really read as him. And I didn't realize it was such an important character to him to read that way. But what I was reading him as was actually that time period. And I was also reading him as... This works out perfect because it's at a pool party and it could be lighter costume and it doesn't have to be something heavy. But Al had a whole different, um, he had a whole different thing in his head and I really didn't know that, which turned into me looking for Devo hats, like like wild Devo hat hunt for two days on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone who said they had Devo hats didn't. <laughs> Someone we interviewed definitely talked talk to us about the Devo hat search. I remember I remember someone mentioned that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was probably Eric. It was probably Eric. Because Eric ultimately had to find them. Eric ultimately found them. I was like, Eric, I'm going to freak out. Like, I, I can't let Al down. <laughs> like, it, it was like... It was like midnight when I found out that Al was going to be let down for the next day. And I was like, or for Monday. And I was like, oh, I had to go up to Eric. And I was like, Eric, heads up, heads up. (laughs) Al's Al's not happy with this choice. (laughs) Because I was so excited. He's like, what's Bowie going to wear tomorrow? I'm like, this, look how great, serious moonlight. (laughs) And he was like, it just was you know, we worked so hard shooting that thing for 19 days. Nobody's like, you know, I think about like, I think about just all the decisions that I had to make with wardrobe. And then all of my, um, all of, I did a gazillion hours of research and I gave hair and makeup the research. I would tell them when, when Al and Eric would approve something, then I would show it to mm. I would give it to hair and makeup. So they had those boards. <clears throat> like, here's the period we're... Go- here's the sort of look we're going for for Oprah. So that would be the hair and makeup of that period, right? Right, yeah. So I gave them all of them. We all had, like, pictures all over our walls. Like, m- my boards were everywhere. And, 
you know, everyone did their best to, to make those looks happen. So I would do a fitting and I would, and it, the fittings would evolve. The Madonna fitting was my absolute very favorite fitting. That was right up my alley. That was so much fun. It was so much fun. <laughs> I loved it. And she actually had pieces of my own personal clothes on, which is oh, great. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, because I'm 62. And so when I, you know, in the 80s was a heyday for me. You know, I was 20 to 30 in the 80s. It was amazing. So, uh, yeah, that. so I had, I still had pieces of that stuff, which was so fun to put on her. Yeah, it was fun. But, yeah, you do, oh, you do the fittings. You, you do the research. Then you go and you find the costumes. You send all of your um, assistants out, all the shoppers, and everyone is, like, given pictures go find stuff like this in this size. I don't care where you get it. But you can give them like, you can give them like a, and it's like, like this, oh God, they had so much fun shopping. It but it was very like stressful. Blast. And it's, <laughs> oh yeah. It is, it is. But you got to know you've got people with the right attitude that don't mind working a little bit harder, that don't mind being under pressure. And I really had a great crew. And there was probably like, 15 of us in the end in the beginning it was going to be it was budgeted as much less much less yeah and i was like oh no we can't do this like this <laughs> 19 days <laughs> to all these actors were coming in and and you have to do all the background too and you don't know their sizes so you have to like pull a ton of stuff that you're going to have to return the next day do a fitting like if you don't want to be charged these all these excessive fees and it wasn't like a really high budget show, so it was fun. It was down and dirty, and it was fun. But I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of work. <laughs> well, we ha- we have some personal reasons why we want to ask about the background uh, costuming. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> It was a really, it was a really hard time for me, you guys. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was great. No. <laughs> Did you guys have a crush on one of my assistants? <laughs> was that it? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> all of them. Everyone, they were all everyone so was cute. so awesome. Oh my god, yeah. everyone was. I think what was really exciting, you know, as as super fans and and collectors is dave and i were able to bring some of our own wardrobe to wear as a background actor so that means that became a screen worn thing in the film that we got to keep so that was really cool oh my god that's really cool that is and i'm always impressed when people because they know how picky i am and i did walk through the crowd and i was like oh so initially that crowd was supposed to be punk rock slash um like not metal but it was like punk rock slash biker slash rock and roll so i had sort of i had a bunch of boards um with that but it kind of turned out to be more in the end they wanted it more like biker Mm -hmm. it worked out great i mean everyone looked great everyone's attitudes were so much fun (laughs) it was I mean, just such an incredible experience for us. <laughs> yeah. A- absolutely, yeah. Dave, help me remember. I remember we did have to send in, like, pictures of ourselves after we were signed on, and we sent some, like, wardrobe options. Is that something that you would have actually looked at? Like, if you go back in your yes. files, you probably oh, have yes, yes. pictures of us? <laughs> yes, because when pe- whenever anyone sent in their pictures, it went to Shanna. Do you remember Shanna? She was supervisor so she would set up all the fittings and all that stuff and Shanna um, would anytime somebody sent in pictures she's like you don't have to do a fitting with this person because they have this stuff and sometimes I'm like yeah but I don't really like that or I would say like <laughs> oh that's great no that's great number two do that one and that's perfect and then I'd be like super happy that I didn't have to find you a leather jacket or something. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, I, I wish I could have actually like 
spent time with you guys if it wasn't such a weird day because we would have been laughing all day long. Oh, totally. Well, on the sequel, we'll we'll oh, definitely yeah. have time to hang out, right, Wendy? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're new best friends. Are you kidding me? You guys will be so sorry you ever met me. <laughs> She's like, this girl is weird. Like everyone thinks I am. No, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll show up on set and, and you'll hand us our costumes and they're going to be covered in, in gemstones and rhinestones. And Al and Eric are going to be like, <laughs> we didn't approve this. <laughs> and, they'll have, and they'll have Rob Stewart leopard print. Like it'll just be a combination yeah. of everything. I love it. I love it. Wendy, with all your interactions with Weird Al on the set, how did you enjoy working with him? I really, uh, again, I wish you could see my face because I would imitate like my every single morning with Al. <laughs> like <laughs> walking up, he'd be sitting in his producer's chair and we all had masks on. And, and right. one of our uh, people got us all Hawaiian masks and they were great. <laughs> we loved them. Aww. And they were so cool and they fit my face so perfectly. And I would like secretly run over and like steal a bunch of them because nothing else fit me. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I would go up to Al every morning and I would go, good morning, Al. And then he would move. He moves his face close, looks at you and he's like, Good morning, Wendy. How are you today? <laughs> like, it was just like, he was so lovely. And like, I, I wish I, I mean, I worked with them every day, obviously. Yeah. But Eric was directing. Al was, you know, Al had so much input, but his input was more with Eric, mm -hmm. you know, and Al had all input on, he had everything. And if he really wanted something done, it was done. But I will say there was nothing short of 100% delightful about that man. Like, I couldn't believe it. I, could, I, I couldn't, <laughs> like, the, the, more, the more and more every day that I thought about the fact that I was working with him and what an amazing man he was, like, I just, was a, I just fell in love with him as a person. And he, he's been really kind to me. So I, I really, what I can say about him is I can't, I can't say anything bad. There's nothing bad. I can say other people like are a little tough, a little rough around here, a little <laughs> rough around these edges. Um, he's clearly is a, a driven creative force. And, and he, he has made, he's like just made the most amazing name for himself out of being this, crazy like look what i'm doing and excuse my expression fuck all of you because i'm doing it <laughs> i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna be my own person <laughs> there's nobody out there like him there's nobody he's so cool like i, I can see why you know people like you guys ha um have him you know ha have this harness of love that you have for him i get it yeah I get it, but I didn't yeah. know it as much until I started working with him. I really didn't know him at all. I mean, I knew his, his songs, of course. Right. I could sing some of them. That's so great. But, yeah. That's so great to hear. Yeah. Yeah, there, yeah, there was so much, I, so much more I learned. Uh, like, I just, he's just, oh, my God. He's really um, an inspiration. And I don't say that about people very often. I'm not really a blow smoke person, <laughs> but he's really cool. I would, I, I would do anything to work with him again. I mean, he was really, and he allowed, you know, they really allowed me to be creative and fun. Like where I could be, it, it was rough because I had to approve like all of the background and sometimes it wasn't exactly what I wanted, you know, wasn't exactly like how I wanted it, mm -hmm. but I didn't have yeah. time or money to to be so picky as I wanted to be, especially time. Time was time was a bomb. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, well, Weird the Al Yankovic story was, of course, famously put together on a very modest budget and very tight schedule, like you mentioned. So uh, overall, I mean, I think that the costuming was absolutely great. I mean, there's really, Aww. I loved everything, how much attention to detail there were. And as, you know, big Weird Al fans that Ethan and myself are, I mean, th this this f looked and felt like it took place in, in the 1980s. So 
you know, kudos to, to you <laughs> on that. Uh, and Daniel didn't wear anything that seemed out of place. It seemed like that is Weird Al, no. um, which is, is really incredible. And I think a really hard thing to capture without just using Weird Al's actual wardrobe. I'm really curious about, you know, we've heard the story that Weird Al actually lended his real eat it jacket. Absolutely. He did. He did. And my, uh, one of our set um, customers, uh, her name is Grace Levere. She really like, she, we dressed her up and she was a girl who handed Al. So that was a moment where I actually got to dress somebody exactly how I wanted to dress them. Mm -hmm. And she handed, she handed Daniel the coat. She just loved Daniel. And I think they developed a friendship as well, you know, out of working together. And she was just the perfect person to do all of this stuff. And she was, you know, she handled the coat with like (laughs) expert hands. Like she was not going to, like Al was like, I need the coat back right away. He didn't say that. He didn't say it like that. But I was so paranoid. I was like, because I had found a coat. I had found a coat that actually fit Daniel and it looked a lot like that coat body wise. And I, so because I do kiss, I'm used to like, doing rhinestones and studs and all that stuff. Yeah. And I was looking at that coat on the video, like from every single angle. And I was about to take it to my rhinestone guy and have him <laughs> like do, and his name is Rolando. He's got a company called star studded in case you ever need anything done. Okay. So he's amazing. <laughs> he's been doing all the rock gods forever, forever. Oh. He did tons of Michael Jackson stuff and, all of my kiss stuff, all of it is done by him. But um, yeah, so I was about to take it there. And then Al was like, you know, I can lend you my coat if you want. And I was like, done, but it won't fit Daniel. And he was like, doesn't have to. It's not going to go on. <laughs> but it was great. Yeah, it was a real coat. That's awesome. I mean, I was I was stoked. It saved me some money. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't get more authentic than that. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, and that's those things are so cool. Is... And there's so many scenes that were I couldn't oh, yeah. even visualize how they were gonna play out. Like so crazy. I'm curious about the. I don't know uh, if this is the official poster, if this was the teaser poster, but the poster of Daniel with the red jacket. It says weird in the rhinestones. Was that a real jacket or is that Photoshop? You know what? I can't tell you for sure, and I'm not saying I can't tell you. Like. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I really don't know because I didn't do that promo shot. Okay. So if it was real, okay. it wasn't me who did it. Okay. And um, yeah, I just wouldn't. I really don't know because they were having to do promo shots when I couldn't even be there to do them because I was so insane. <laughs> <laughs> insane. But did not didn't Daniel do the best job ever? Absolutely. I mean. Blew me away. I don't think anyone could have pulled it off the way that Daniel did with the authenticity and the humor. Uh, it was just, it was so great. Can't say enough great things about him in the film. <laughs> I can't. Oh. I know. I know. He's hilarious. <laughs> he was hilarious. Now, thinking of all the different characters, I mean, Weird Al, Dr. Demento, Madonna, you know, even Oprah and the Scotty Brothers, but then all the 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 musicians that you're parodying with you know Elvira and Pee Wee Herman and Alice Cooper and you know what were some of your all time favorite looks what were you most happy with at the end of the day one hundred percent Madonna yeah a hundred percent yeah like uh, because it was fun for me you know um, Weird was imitating you know but Daniel it was imitating Weird Al so it was um, you know, to me, that's very straightforward. It was more challenging because I was trying to make it look authentic. With Madonna, I didn't have to make her look authentic. I just had to make her look like Madonna in that period. Right. Right. So it didn't have to be authentic, but I gave her, I gave her, you know, if somebody were to look at her in her white skirt, they'd be like, oh, it's like a virgin. But if you look at like a virgin, it really wasn't but it indicated right you captured the essence of it so she copying it yeah 
she for me was fun only because you know we put on madonna music and we were dancing around and being nuts and like i just kept stacking like i was like here's some jewelry and then i'm gonna stack more on you later and then as it went on i was like stack 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 (laughs) bracelets bracelets and and then and then i was using all of like a like some of my own hats from the 80s and some of my brooches from the 80s which i have a ton of (laughs) and like so much fun but she was she was fun for me and i had time to do her proper Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um daniel was fun for me because it was just making me laugh just i think al was in the room in the beginning al and eric were there for the very beginning fitting and then i think they basically were like okay yeah we, that's good well and we did so many fittings also if you look at my instagram you'll see one picture where i actually and i i want to do this with a lot of people um is i have a bunch of hawaiian shirts of just like i cut daniel's head and body out and just said you know, weird owl Hawaiian shirt fittings yeah. or something. Yeah. And cause I always try to like, you know, respect the talent and not just put stuff out there yeah. that they may or may not like, or the producers may or may not like. Mm. That's probably why you don't see that much stuff by me. If you look me up because I'm not as, I'm not as, um, I don't really take the liberties that I could because I try to respect yeah. their privacy and then everyone else doesn't. And then I think, why didn't I do that? Because <laughs> right. it looks like they're the designer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, um, but so, so doing Daniel was really cool and it was fun because I just, he had that little mustache. And then when they went in to do the wig test and I, I was just crying. I was like peeing my pants. Like we were all just revving up for, we're going to start shooting in a couple of days. You know what I mean? And then, and then I loved doing the Oprah fitting because she loved everything so much. Um, I loved doing um, Al's mom. Like she, we, for some reason, Mary made me laugh so much, the Mary character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but she was like, somebody said, I, I just said, like, I did a fitting, these fittings with her. We picked the dresses. And then I but didn't have all my jewelry that I wanted. Like, I've got a ton of jewelry, but I didn't have all of it on set that day. And I had to set her with earrings, and I didn't, she didn't really love the earrings that I set her with. Rightly so. She was like, I feel like they're just a little bit too fancy for the character. But she told told my assistant that because I was in another fitting or something. Mm-hmm. And so my assistant ran in and was like, she, oh, she, she uh, feels like she could have different earrings. And I was like, oh, no, okay, okay. And then I started scrambling. And I was like, oh, I have the perfect ones for her. And my assistants don't always love this part about me. I put, I set them up to do really crazy stuff. I go, I, I, there were these two giant, like giant, like they were like five inch long earrings that were bright green with dollar signs on them. They were like these hip hop (laughs) earrings from a sketch comedy show I worked on. And I go, give her these and tell her, and tell her thank you <laughs> thank you i want her to wear these and she was like she w- she wouldn't do it she wouldn't do it she literally would not do it and so i was like okay i'm gonna do it right now so i ran over to her and i had my hands behind my back and i was like surprise i have the best earrings for you ever <laughs> and she, she goes oh yeah and i go close your eyes and I put them in her hands and she could feel them and she already started laughing. <laughs> and she opened her eyes and she could just see that there were these big, bright lime green and silver, <laughs> like like plastic dollar sides, and she just started laughing and that started that started hers and my relationship off, you know. Yeah. Like we had we had a really good time, yeah. but then I would just bring her in surprise earrings every once in a while <laughs> or a surprise belt, like a big 80s belt on a 50s dress or, you know, <laughs> that was fun. I mean, it was all really fun. It was, you know, the actors were all like, so like Conan, you know, coming in. I didn't get a fitting. I, I didn't have a proper fitting with him. He came in. He was going on set in like 20 minutes. And I was like, God, I hope these turtlenecks fit you. <laughs> Like it oh, honestly, and, and 
And he's so tall, and I'm only 5'2". It's like standing with Kiss right. like, without their boots. Like, it's like, <laughs> so he's t- Kona's so tall, I never pictured he was so tall. But he was like, oh, I'm so excited to do this. Like, everyone was excited. But, but back to, I'm just going back to something that you asked about. It was like, the, the, at some point, maybe it was a long time ago. Um, so, so Pee Wee Herman... It was more of I really I really tried really hard to dress him just like he was and that does become a challenge because you can't just find that even though you think you can you can't just find mm. that in the size you want right but it turned out he he looked really good I thought he did but it was like Everyone people did. were bringing me yeah. like shoes and I was like ah oh. but but um, divine like divine. She didn't have a divine costume. She didn't have that red dress. So she made it. Oh, wow. And we paid her, you know, a certain amount of oh, money. Wow. Yeah, she had it made. Holy and she was crap. soaked because now she has that costume. Yeah. Wow, and that's then so cool. Al- Alice oh, Cooper. Cool. Yeah. Alice Cooper was fun. And and I was saying, you know, maybe what if we had like a fake snake? And there we are. We have a fake snake. <laughs> Because Alice was always like, that's just such a classic thing, right? And then yeah. Gallagher, like Paul, he's so much fun. And I worked with him on a show that I did for five years, You're the Worst. And Paul was on that at our last season. And it was so much fun to see him. And we were all supposed to be in our mask. And Paul and I both pulled our mask down secretly and took a picture. <laughs> oh. And Jack Black is wearing my personal scarf. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I know, I know. Like you guys, right? You wear your own stuff and you're like, how cool is it? <laughs> so, That's awesome. <laughs> once Jack Black wears your scarf or, or Evan Rachel Wood wears some of your clothes, do you get to, do you lose them? Does it go into, you know, movie property? Oh, no. Uh-uh. You get them back. No. You get them back. And so you will wear the Jack Black scarf around town? Oh, I wear it all the time. <laughs> no, I always wear it. It's like, I have personal stuff that's like my kit, but that's my personal, personal scarf. And it's a, if you look at it, um, it's a leopard print. It's got some pink in it, and it just happened to work with this shirt, <laughs> and it just happened to work with the Wolfman Jack. Oh, and also, by the way, what about this? What about a before and after Wolfman Jack Black? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I brought it. I brought it. As I told him, I was like, I feel like you're like a before and after Wolfman Jack Black. <laughs> Straight out of <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, and I laugh a lot. Like, I love comedy. And even, like, you know, working with the bands and stuff, I laugh all the time. I, I, it, it, it's very difficult for me to not laugh and to, to be super serious. Like, it's probably harder for me. That's probably why I don't get hired with, like, I don't know, like, a-list actors I don't know because I think that people are afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> They're afraid I'm going to offend someone, you know. You don't want to work with people who are going to get you know offended I mean? like that, though. I don't. I don't. I like stuff like this. I like it where I can be free and fun and yeah, happy, <laughs> you know. But it doesn't mean that I don't get stressed out because I do. Wendy, with your connection to Kiss, uh, was there ever any thought of adding like Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley or one of the other Kiss guys to the grotto scene? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think that it was even a um, a thought, or maybe it was a thought at some point. But I think um, I remember there was something about it, maybe where Gene said that he knew Al. And that he thought thought a lot of him because I always tell everyone I'm working with like what else I'm doing. Yeah. Because Kiss was always I would call it my side job, because I could do it while I was and it was hard. It was not easy, but I could, but I could figure most things out while I was on a show, and then it would always seem to be the show was ending, and then I could go into full blown Kiss mode. But I remember it was Gene. Yeah, yeah, because Al was asking me, um, as same as Rod do they do their own makeup? And I'm like, yes, they absolutely do their own makeup. And even so, it makes me realize even amongst the 
the people who are peers. Like these guys are all peers. Yeah. That it shock it yeah. shocks me that they actually really somewhere in their head think, nah, eh, there's no way that they do their own makeup. And they do, by the way, guys, they do their own makeup. <laughs> I've never seen anyone do their makeup. And I wow. have nothing to hide. Like and I would always tell people this, like my some of my best friends, I go, what do you think I'm in contract that they're going to c- snuff me out if I say <laughs> that they someone else does their makeup? Like, <laughs> they do their own makeup and that is part of their process of their whole thing. And for a fact, like Jean comes in like an hour and 45 to two hours before the other guys. And then Eric comes in after him, a half hour after him. And then Tommy and Paul are take an hour hmm. because Eric and Jean, like they just la- are talking too much. <laughs> so they and need so that it extra takes time. Them longer to do their <laughs> yes, it's it's a true story because they could do it fast if they wanted, but they like do, they love the process and their little quirky things it's that they have. Part of the fun. <laughs> it's amazing. It is. It really is part of the fun, and they really do. do they. 21 years, I've never seen one person do their makeup unless it's like <laughs> some joke or something to have something for a podcast or a, a, a video just to be fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, no, they're hardcore. They all know it and they all know it well. You better lay that <laughs> out right for them to do it. <laughs> well, it. It seems like a missed opportunity to not have a kiss character at the Dr. Demento's pool party. I think you're probably right. It probably does. <laughs> but I feel like Al was like calling in people. It, I, it is kind of funny to think that. But I wonder like, I hope we do another one. Oh, no. I hope there's, so too. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> oh, God. Right? And then you guys make the second coming. Like, how cool to... <laughs> It's where you think about, like... Dave and I could play Kiss in the second movie. It doesn't matter when or where. <laughs> Ethan and I will be will be there if we are invited. If we're allowed. <laughs> Wait, you guys you guys can can do Kiss? Who does who? Oh, it doesn't oh, matter. I would do Kiss. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll do whatever. <laughs> well, well, you're the Kiss expert, there, Wendy. Who would you... Uh, how would you dress us up? Yeah, as how Kiss? would you cast us? <laughs> uh... I um I would have to look at your faces again. But I think <laughs> Ethan, you could be maybe Jean. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, only because you're I'm I'm trying to figure out like none of neither of your face shapes that I can remember are like theirs. We'd have to However, sh- we'd have to shave our beards probably, right? Yeah, we would have to shave. You'd have to shave and you'd be bummed out probably, right? Oh, for Al we we would do it. <laughs> Uh, even speaking for Dave, oh. clean shaven if we have to. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now Al's going to hear this and he's going to demand it. <laughs> we'll do whatever. We'll do whatever. If I get to play one of the performers from Kiss, I would absolutely do that. <laughs> well, let's see. Which one of you are good on drums, bass, guitar, or and or singing? <laughs> see? That's where... It's gotta be tricky. You've well, got. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't base it off a of talent. I would. I would base. <laughs> who can do Gene's voice? <laughs> I think that's for who another can, podcast. Do we'll Jean's do auditions. Voice. <laughs> you can cast <laughs> us. <laughs> now, Wendy, I want to go back to something you said very early on in the interview that I, I just, it's, I really wanted to ask you, and I, and I think this is the right time. You said you dated a guy who is in a Kiss cover band. Does he know that you now work for Kiss? And how jealous is this guy? He does. Not, okay, not only did I date him, but he became, uh, down the road, right before I started working for Kiss, he became my husband. No way! (laughs) And then then we got a divorce. So no, we're not together anymore. But we got a divorce, but we're super good friends. But he was a six foot four drummer. But they had, like, they were so good. They were so good. And the guy who sang, uh, who did Paul Stanley, also did David Bowie and the other cover band. Mm -hmm. And he was so good. They were both. They were all so amazing. (laughs) And, of course, at that time, I wasn't doing costumes. But I was going to Fashion Institute, and I was doing set stuff. So I used to make, like, we used to do their makeup. My, My friend Nicole and I, her boyfriend was the Ace Freely guy. 
and my boyfriend was a drummer <laughs> and we would do all their uh, makeup and stuff and it's so funny like that the actual band kiss has no idea about this <laughs> 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 they know it's so funny like sometimes it makes me laugh like what people like people that you work with like what they don't know right <laughs> like about you it is funny because like um rod actually uh, rod will actually ask me what what do you what are you all about like where'd you come from blah 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 and then he just gets a kick out of it <laughs> and it makes him laugh. And then he's, you know, he's perpetuated by, I don't know, perpetuated by his, uh, but he's fueled as well by the band who was 12 people. And they're all together at the end of the night. So that's kind of a funny thing. And they all like love to make fun of me in the kindest of ways. <laughs> they're, they always are like, Wendy, you're a legend. You're a legend. And then they all yell out my name. Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> like, and it's like a, it's like a chant. <laughs> and it's so much fun. And to think of, you know, we think about the fact that like how, you know, we talk about it sometimes now. It's only been a year. I'm still, I still get anxiety before I go out on tour and stuff. Because I always think, like, when's a shoe going to drop? When am I going to f*** up? When am I, you know what I mean? It's just what you do. You, As an artist, you're never really, well, you guys are artists too. You've got a podcast, you know what I mean? But you're never 100% sure of if what you're doing is right or when you're going to, like, say just the wrong thing, when you're trying to just be yourself, or if you're not going to come up with the costume that Weird Al or Kiss <laughs> or whoever, you know, <laughs> you know, really is counting on, and I take it very to heart. And I do know a lot of costume designers who kind of just sort of blow it off, and they want to do whatever they want to do. Then I definitely, I just get such... I get so many um, opportunities to do what I want to do that when the director, the actor, the artist, the musician, when they want me to do something, I really take it to heart and I really try hard to make that happen. That is true. Wendy, this has just been such an amazing time getting to chat with you and, and hear about all of your incredible work with Weird Al and Kiss and Mad TV and Rod Stewart. But there's something else that you're doing that I think is really, really amazing. And it's it's a, it's a really touching story. I'd love if you could tell us just really quick about your documentary that you're working on. So um, it is it, it sort of started, started out as about my brother who was killed in Vietnam. And he was the first American casualty in 1970. And he was a really cr- crappy deal. And um, I mean, as it all is, war is terrible. Yeah. But um, there, there was a guy that that he became friends with right away, and then they became um, very close in Vietnam. It was only two short months, but they became very close. And um, I was just going through a bunch of stuff of my mom's and found out that this uh, I, I found the guy who was with my brother as he died. And as it turns out, there was so much more to know about the story than I ever knew. And so I started doing a documentary about it, and it's called Love Barry, Love, comma, Barry. And Barry was a guy that was with him all through boot camp in Vietnam, and he, I found him, and he's this amazing guy, and we're doing a documentary about um, love through connection and healing through connection, and a letter that he had written his parents that my parents received was sort of a three- or four-page thing about how my brother was killed that night and it was the day after it happened and the end of the paper just says love Barry so that's why I've named it that um I somehow managed to find this Barry guy but um yeah it's a it's it's really great we're working on it and it's a a super sad story very happy outcome in the end of if you can make a happy outcome yeah so that's it and I'm working on the- You sent us a link and, and you said, try not to cry. And I tried not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, oh. it's really sweet. Um, you, you, you know, there's a trailer and there, there's also like a proof of concept that people can check yes. out and, and we'll, we'll be sure to share some information 
um, with our audience so they can check it out. Oh, and, thank you. And you are, um, you know, it is a work in progress, and I know that there's a GoFundMe, so if people want to contribute to it, it's really a, a touching story, and it's really an incredible story that deserves to be told. So we're we're really um, happy to get to to highlight that and what a cool project that you're working on thank you thank you i mean i never thought i'd be doing something like this but i kind of wanted to but i didn't know what it was i just wanted to get i don't know i kept having this thing oh i'm gonna do a documentary about my brother but then it turned into meeting barry and it just being a whole different thing this is the guy that's living and he had to live with this his whole life you know not his whole life but Almost. Yeah. They were only 20. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I love it. We had just such such an amazing time, Wendy. We hope people will actually go over and check out your Instagram because you do have some really fun stuff over there and we can get some more information <laughs> as well as the, the link to the GoFundMe. Your name is Rodeo Kitty. And we can go there and we can see those great pictures of the Hawaiian shirts and you digging through the the thrift store Hawaiian shirts (laughs) and other fun stuff. (laughs) Wendy, thank you so much for joining us. This this really was just a a wonderful time. Oh, thank you. And I I feel like we'll, we'll all be friends. Thank you again to Wendy Benbrook for the great interview and the insights I'm working on. We are the Al Yankovic story and with Kiss. Wow. You can head on over to her Instagram page to follow her adventures on tour and on the sets over at Rodeo Kitty. Ooh, that sound means we have a call on the 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast. All right, intern Frank, play that message. Hey, Dave and Ethan, it's Metal Al, and, uh... Tonight I went to a Weird Al burlesque show here in Columbus, Ohio, and it was off the walls. It was crazy. I'm also here with up-and-coming burlesque performer Chastity Cage. What were your thoughts on the Weird Al burlesque show, Alapalooza, Bossy Girl Tonight? First of all, the costumes were outrageous. They were amazing. I think they took... Uh, they did really good song choices. We heard Hardware Store. We heard multiple polkas, including the Hamilton polka. That was awesome. Also, during the intermission, which was 15 minutes long. They played Albuquerque. Which was perfect because they literally pretty much got back on stage right after. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like you were sitting around. You had Weird out from, like, basically the time you walked in the door until the time you left. Yeah. Yeah. Some other songs we heard was I Lost on Jeopardy. Oh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Which also, we we were trying to guess some of the songs that they were going to play on our way there, and we were questioning some of the songs that had some more sensitive, like, PC material. And I liked that they did these um, songs and kind of just played into the jokes of it all. One performer opened up a can of SpaghettiOs, and poured it on themselves. During Eat It. It yeah. was fabulous. It was, it was really great. Very good. Oh, someone sat on a cake, too. Someone did sit on a cake. Pretty great. So, yes. Uh, in conclusion, the Weird Al Burlesque show was a ton of fun. And, uh, and if you ever get a chance to go to one, you should go because they're fun. Would recommend. So, uh, yeah. Metal Al. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the call, Metal Al and Chastity Cage. I'm so glad that both of you had a great time at the Weird Al Burlesque show. Yes, thank you for the review. It sounds really great, but, hmm, pouring SpaghettiOs on themselves, sitting on cake? That sounds pretty similar to what I was doing this weekend. This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota a beautiful, it's also metal. When you're in Darwin, Minnesota, there's just one place to go for all your metal fabrication needs. Serving Metalworks. A giant warehouse of metal for every occasion. Thousands to choose from in every shape, size, and color. Wow, that's pretty impressive for such a small town business. Yeah, well, I am kind of guessing here. There's not too much of an online presence for Servin Metalworks, you know? 
Regardless, being based in the thriving metropolis of Darwin, Minnesota must be good for the local economy. Just imagine how many people a metal fabrication company that has been around since 1983 must employ. Well, current estimates show that this company employs a bustling staff of approximately one. Approximately one employee? Well, no way to know for sure about if it's a full person or a little bit more than one person, but I really just picture the place is entirely run by robots. Are you just making all this up as you go along? Yes, I am! So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next metal expedition. Discover Darwin more than just a twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to attempt to visit www.discoverdarwin.biz. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Wizard Burger, our very own Jackson Scoggins, and Discover Darwin. Our podcast is also supported by everyone else in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our very own close personal friend-level Patreon supporters, UH Jeff, Blair, Kenneth, Ajax, Javier, Scotto, Matt, Kev, Casey, Allison, Adriana, Gus and Alicia, Zach, Ron, Zeb, Dana B. Also thanks to Patrick and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy skanking to our Leaping Weird Al podcast, as heard in the commentary track on the Weird Al Yankovic Story Steelbook, please consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast, your very own private RSS feed, which gives you early access to each and every single one of our bonus episodes, and the self-satisfaction of doing something important with your otherwise pitiful, meaningless existence. Once you join, you'll be the very first to hear our bonus episodes the instant that they drop, whenever they do drop. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise over at shop.2000inch.com. All proceeds from purchases go directly towards supporting our fantastic podcast. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so make sure you join our Facebook community over at group.2000inch.com and be sure to visit our Discord server for even more riveting Weird Al and Red Rump the Goody related conversations. You can find both of them linked on our website, as well as information about past episodes and guests over at 2000inch.com or weirdalpodcast.com. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, X, Threads, and Instagram. And be sure to subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. Not only does subscribing help the podcast, it's for crazy energy! Plus, we also love it when we receive voicemail of their official patent-pending 27-hour-day podcast hotline 347 spatula, as seen in the Illustrated Al, the songs of Weird Al Yankovic. That number is 347-772-8852. Give it a call or a text, and you might even hear your message in a future episode. Thank you once again to our amazing guest, Wendy Benbrook, for joining us this episode. We'd also like to thank Eric Rhodes, Kenneth Gwynnup, Metal Al, Chastity Cage, Allison Parsons, Claire Walsh. Thank you to the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song. And thank you to the 17 time Grammy nominated Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. Also, a big thank you to all of you, our loyal listeners, our loyal subscribers, our loyal Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. And until next time, remember to gill and chill, keep listening to Weird Al, and stay cheesy. Well, Ethan, we know what you did last weekend, but I meant to ask you last episode, how did you celebrate Pokemon Day on February 27th? What do you mean, how did I celebrate, Dave? Yeah, I mean, did you dress up like Alakazam, or Al Kremi, or Al Omamala, or Al Terrier, or Polkachu? No, I just kept it cool and low key. I silently acknowledged that it was Pokemon Day and listened to Weird Al's Pokemon song once. And that was that. Really now? You didn't slowly repeat Weavile over and over to yourself in the mirror until it sounded like you were saying Weird Al. No, did you do that? Uh, um, No, of course not. No, absolutely no. I mean, not this year. (laughs) 
That was Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 223-inch. We vile, we vile, we vile, we vile. I didn't even cuss that much. <laughs> well, those will be bleeped. <laughs> I'm a, yeah, but I'm a total like <laughs> person.